Greetings, unsettled souls. This is Sam I beat Ganji doing political commentary for the media speaks. You might know me from Wits News or Blasting News as well. If so, there is a, there's a reason you're going to want to keep an eye on Blasting News. It might have to do with a certain band with the name Sheep in their title. That's all I'm going to say. Also, um, uh, interesting work coming out from Wits News. For those of you that like my more serious political stuff, I will be doing uh, a piece. Hey, Patrick, I will be doing a piece on taxes that should be out within the next week. That's on Wits News. Like I said, that is a lot more serious than the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Now, what we do is uh, every month, for those of you that don't know, we send out a dunce cap. They've been sent to Nancy Pelosi. They've been sent to the FBI. They've been sent to uh, anybody that comes up with the dumbest story on any given month. Well, over the last year, we have gathered a list, and you guys get to pick which one the absolute dumbest is. And you can vote. You go on Facebook. You can vote. Hello, you guys on YouTube. Hey, Greg. Um, the high def will be going up later. You guys up there, that's, that'll load on my channel, youtube.com slash the correct views. So you have lots of places to do this. Uh, real quick, we're going to go over what they were for the last year. What I'm giving away this year is uh, I've never done this. I'm going to have all of the Dunce Caps Awards for the last year printed out. If you want, I'll sign them. That's fine. I will uh, send them out, and then you'll have a copy of them. I had not done that before, and somebody mentioned that it would be a good idea, and I agreed with them. All right. Um, that was the woman last month who uh, blamed President Trump for black obesity, even though uh, black obesity rates were actually higher in 2015. Um the, the, the college, that the Christian college that wanted the students to repent to plants for their for their climate sins, for sins against the plants, that was one of them. YouTube saying they're going to promote free speech. That's, that's a really good one, considering that they ban just about everything. And they make it virtually impossible for smaller shows like ours to get around, which is why I do go live on a few different formats can solve much of that by hitting share, by the way, so please do. Um, the arresting of the cat lady, giving the uh, the elderly lady 10 days in jail for feeding feral cats. Um, if you, this, this could be a winner. If you don't date a trans person, then you are transphobic. So if you're a guy and you don't want to be with someone with five limbs who call themselves a girl, they say that you are accusing them of a make-believe reality when in fact they really are women or vice versa and if you don't date them the problem is yours that could be a winner how about the fact that the fbi knew that the trump uh the the person of interest in the ukraine this isn't going to win unless you follow politics but if you follow politics closely this may get a vote or two hello josh this may get a vote or two the person who they were using as a as looking into as a Ukrainian asset was someone to whom the FBI already knew was a U.S. asset, that is to say, spy. So one of the main people being looked up, the FBI already knew that they were innocent and did nothing to prevent it. And it came out later in, the, the of course, the Mueller report. Um, the Jewish man that was called a white supremacist by Nancy Pelosi. That was that could be a winner for the dunce cap of the year. Um, CNN reporting the exact opposite of what the Mueller report said as they were reading it and going to a screenshot. That could be a winner. Only only a few left. Uh, Beto wants to take down the wall. That that was that speaks for itself. Um, Kamala Harris didn't want anybody to have more than six bullets because she's never heard of flash, flash mobs or gang rapes before, I guess. Um, again, the Democrat Party and Nancy Pelosi for wanting Donald Trump to stay in the war in the Middle East, considering that they've always been against that. Um, 
And the last one, you will have to wait to the end of the show because I don't do the last one until the end of the show. So let me know which of those are 11, which of the 12 you think is the dumbest. If you just tuned in, it's, it's going to the beginning. And I will randomly pick a name out of a hat. Oh, hell, I'll make it two people. Um, I'll, well, that's not going to work. Well, I'll make it two winners, but only one person is going to get to pick the winner of the year. How's that? Two people that vote. I will make sure you get a copy, a uh, color copy of each of the 12 dunce caps for the year. I will send them to you. I'll just need an address or a P.O. box. And I randomly pick one. So instead of doing it by numbers and polls, not everybody's on Facebook. Some people are on YouTube. Some people are on Wits News all over the place. So I'm just doing it this way. However, I see your comment. So make sure you put exclamation points or something. And that brings us into the dunce cap of the month of show. Dunce detect to the dunce cap of the month award show, with which will lead with uh, it will end with the very last story being the one who wins the dunce cap this month, and it does count towards the eleventh that I just gave. All right, the Washington Free Beacon, yay! Climate change may require the elimination of car ownership. Now, how many times have I told people here quite frequently that this is about controlling people? This has absolutely nothing to do with the climate whatsoever. I've given the, the facts to prove, or at least call into great question, even if you're a firm cultist, the, the, the climate cultist, there's... There's very little evidence to support that man is warming the planet at all. Like I've said a million times, the toxins in the air are quite likely giving us cancers, giving us all kinds of terrible things. And it would be good to produce energy in a better way. But that's not what any of this is about. It's about control. Well, people say, well, do you have any proof of that? I could offer this. <coughs> Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang, also known as Santa Claus, I'll say why in a minute, said that the United States may have to eliminate private car ownership to combat climate change during MSNBC's climate forum at Georgetown University on Thursday morning. Now, the reason I call him Santa Claus is because he wants to give everything away. And out of all of the Democrat uh, choices here. I kind of lean towards him, and I'll tell you why. If the government is going to be absolutely irresponsible, then doesn't it stand to reason? And doesn't it just make a little bit of sense to say, okay, fine. Maybe we should just go ahead and give the money back to the people entirely. Now, those who are against taxes would have a hard time arguing with that. Although, of course, that's not the way it's going to be done. That's the way he says it's going to be done. But it'll be metered out in some way that'll have everybody at each other's throats anyhow. But he told MSNBC host Ali Velshi, excuse me, that we might not own our cars by 2050 to wean the United States economy off of fossil fuels, describing private car ownership as really inefficient and bad for the environment. Privately owned cars would be replaced by a constant roving fleet of electric cars. Yeah, that would be great. For one thing, uh, it will completely eliminate freedom of movement. Nobody will be able to change their minds. Advertising a store will be useless because unless it's already ready to stop there, you're going to be done. Every car will be just as germy as a uh, taxi cab. That would be a great idea. A video posted by the GOP War Room shows Velshi asking Yang what measures he sees the world taking to fight climate change by 2050. You have this ability to envision the future right with your own proposals on universal basic income. You've played the whole chess game out and you see what it looks like at the other end. Play the chess game out on climate change, Velshi says. What does the world look like in 2050? To you, what physically do you think we will do differently than we do today that will result in us fighting climate change? Well, I mentioned before that we might not own our own cars. Our current car ownership and usage model is really inefficient and bad for the environment. Do you hear what he's saying? 
you being able to go where you want to go, when you want to go there, in the way that you want to go there, without anybody asking why you want to go there, is in danger. Who's going to vote for this? When you're really selling is not the car, it's mobility, he said. So if you have mobility, then that's then tied to much more. If you had, like, for example, he said, this constant roving fleet of electric cars that you could just order up and then you could diminish the impact on ground transportation. Some people do buy cars for more than transportation, adult. Some people collect them. Some people have very old cars. As a matter of fact, the car show industry is a booming industry in America, largely because of everything you said that isn't true. God, is he an idiot. And we have, we have bigger dumpties. They get dumber and dumber the further we go into the show, friends. Italy's leftist government to indoctrinate school change and children in climate change. Literally. A, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one because we've talked about it before. But I wanted to mention that it, I had said that there were similarities and that the problem with mentioning Adolf Hitler with anything is the fact that people immediately start reverting to killing Jews or something. Well, you, that's ridiculous. That's not what Italy wants to do. No, it's not. That's not what I'm saying. Anybody on the left wants to do. However, there were nuances within the fascist government structure of which Hitler was part of, uh, the leader of, even as it affected, of course, Mussolini in Italy, there were precepts. And one of them was to indoctrinate the children with whatever kind of pseudoscience you wanted. Back then it was genetic pseudoscience. Today it is climate change pseudoscience. There is no man-made climate change. There is no science to support man-made climate change. And all of the models shown are easily debunked, but you don't see them for reasons that I ask you to hit share a minute ago. Because this, the people that actually show these things are being diminished because this is about control. And one of the ways to gain control over a society is to control the children through false indoctrination, such as Rome. Italian public schools will soon require children in every grade to study climate change as the unelected left, leftist government aims to put Italy at the forefront of environmental education worldwide. What they're going to do by pushing fake science onto children, is they're going to end up with a, uh, a revolt of the adults if they move too quickly. That might be why they're going after the children, of course. But in, in France, they tried this, and they've had revolts in the streets. God, thank God. Uh, people are calling out the scam and the known lie of climate change in the streets of Paris largely because their lives are being destroyed for the myth of climate change. That's why. Um, man with his name tattooed on his throat is arrested for giving a fake name. When I say it's the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show, friends, I really do mean it. Toronto, an Illinois man was arrested, and they show his picture here. This is great. For allegedly giving police a fake name, despite him having his name tattooed on his neck. I'm seeing if there's screen share here with YouTube. No, that's been ruined by Google, too. Mattoon police were investigating a forgery case when Matthew Bushman, who has now appeared on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show, of Mansfield, Illinois, gave officers a false name and date of birth to dodge an existing warrant of his arrest. Now, that's pretty common. It is. But, there's always a but on the Dunce Cap of the Month show, police were likely given pause by the 36-year-old's choice of tattoo. The police mugshot obtained by CTV News showed Maddie B tattooed across his throat. Now, he could have said this was his girlfriend, Matisha, maybe? His daughter, little Maddie? He was booked by police last week on obstruction of justice. He probably didn't think of that, or they caught him. He probably didn't think of it because he already wasn't thinking. And he's wearing like a shirt that shows his neck clearly. He's got like, I guess what's supposed to be a rose tattooed under his eye, but it looks a lot like the chest buster from Alien. God, I wish I had Christelle in sound effects. It would have been great. 
Uh, after his arrest, he was taken to Coles County Jail. None of the allegations have been proven in court. Well, I, <laughs> the writing's on the neck. Oh, Jesus. Um, Help me, help me, help me. I don't mean to be so mean. The reason he deserved it, I don't know. Um, Bernie Sanders manages to make marijuana legalization cost $50 billion. Now, many of you are wondering if this won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show. And damn close. I mean, really close. Yesterday, Brainy Sanders uh, released at 4.20 p.m., no less. <laughs> the author wrote, sigh. An ambitious marijuana legalization plan that is heavy on taxes, spending, regulation, and executive action. Now, again, we do want to make sure that what's being sold on the street isn't going to harm anyone. But we already have laws against poisoning someone. If someone was to contaminate marijuana with another drug, we already have laws against that. Even though marijuana isn't legal everywhere, if you poison someone's marijuana, we do have laws against it. Therefore, a lot of the regulation that is talking about isn't spoken about isn't even needed. But within the first 100 days, it says of his administration, the Vermont Independent Senator and Democratic Presidential Candidate is promising to issue an executive order instructing the Attorney General to deschedule marijuana as a controlled substance under the Controlled Substances Act, something legalization advocates say would be a huge win. Sanders' plan also calls for expunging the records of those convicted of federal marijuana offenses. So this is good. Very good. However, Sanders wants to tax the newly legal marijuana industry to the tune of $50 billion over 10 years and then spend that revenue on new grant and development programs. Now listen, what's going to happen is if that occurs then private people are going to sell marijuana just like they are now for prices that are, you know, things go up and down, but roughly the same price it is now. You know, allowing for inflation, you know what I mean. A 20 bag, maybe a 30 bag 15 years from now. But in essence, Bernie Sanders' bag is going to be like $62. So you're not going to do that. You're going to buy it illegally. So you, in theory, could still be arresting people for marijuana sale under Bernie Sanders' plan. And if you don't believe me, then remember the gentleman that was strangled for selling, strangled by the police, no less, for selling individual cigarettes in New York City. Cigarettes are legal. So Bernie's taking us <coughs> down that road, which is why he damn near won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. But he didn't. Oxford University bans clapping at student union events to stop triggering anxiety. We have reached a point now in America where, and all over the West, everything hurts our feelings and we need the safe space. We need our safe spaces. Now, because something bad might have happened to you, there's a chance that clapping could trigger anxiety. So we're going to use jazz hands so that we don't make anybody nervous instead of making somebody just get over it. And I'm not saying all things in life are something that you can get over. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm quite the opposite on that. I believe that things can happen so bad to you that you don't ever get over it. I don't, however, believe that such a person needs to be catered to, to this extent. There has to be some ability to function in a normal public setting without the normal public setting having to change itself in order to function for you. Play that again, it was well said. What kind of grudge do British universities have against clapping? Roughly one year after the University of Manchester, student union banned clapping, at its events, and choosing to instead ask audiences to use jazz hands to show their appreciation for a performance. Students at the University of Oxford are working to replace clapping because it could trigger anxiety. 
So basically, if you do a good job, everybody in the crowd's going to look like they're either doing the stupid raise the roof dance or that they're swatting at flies rather than paying attention to the performance. Way to go, England. You're doing a most remarkable job. Uh, NPR gushes over Al Baghdadi. He was a real leader. Now, this is truly impressive here. In order not to give Trump any credit whatsoever, remember how the media gushed over Obama when we're supposed to believe that he killed um, Osama bin Laden? We're supposed to believe that he lived longer on a uh, kidney dialysis machine without a transplant than anybody you could ever think of, maybe in the top 1% of all medical history. And he did so while running from multiple governments carrying the x-ray machine into caves where they miraculously used battery power for weeks on end with no way to plug it in. Okay, the media gushed over that. However, when President Trump takes out a real terrorist who is very much still alive, the left, rather than give him any praise at all, will praise the terrorist. NBR, about as left as you get, gushed over ISIS terror leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, Baghdadi, describing him as a real leader who spearheaded a movement we've never seen before. He was a rapist, a murderer. He slaughtered thousands of people. If not, probably, I wouldn't be surprised, tens of thousands. The leader of ISIS. He led a government movement that we've never seen before, Meyer said. ISIS had tens of thousands of members, fighters coming in from all over the world. They controlled massive amounts of territory in eastern Syria and western and northern Iraq, Meyer said, adding that ISIS had millions of people under their control. They administered cities and collected taxes. Oh, well, that's probably why you like them so much. If that's not media bias, friends, then I have no idea how in the world you're able to chew gum and breathe at one time. Um, we've only got a couple of stories left. Listen to this. Paul Joseph Watson, PJ Dub. Al Jazeera says not wanting to eat insects is racist. Now, I understand that a lot of people in underdeveloped countries eat, eat them out of necessity. Sometimes they eat them by choice. Of course, we know in the Bible that John the Baptist lived off of locust and wild honey. We also know that bread and fish were readily available in that community, so it must have been something that he liked. Locusts were one of the few uh, bugs that were permitted to be eaten in Jewish culture, as a matter of fact. However, not eating bugs does not mean you hate Jews or black people. It means that you don't eat bugs. Now, if they, if they don't eat turkey meat, if they don't eat beef, are they racist then against white people? Because it doesn't seem to me that white people who don't eat bugs are being racist against black people for not eating a regular black diet, if by the same token, minorities are not called racist for not eating a meat banquet, which many white people do. They see how that works? You can't have it both ways. That's why it's the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. According to Al Jazeera, not wanting to eat insects is racist, not dehumanizing. No, not in the least. Because Christopher Columbus said that a trait, it was a trait of savages. Yes, really. Well, and I covered this on Thanksgiving. I had it on my Facebook page. Christopher Columbus did not call all Indians savages. That's a myth. Most Indian tribes despised the very tribes who Columbus called savages. Why did he call them savages? Because they would bathe in the blood of their enemies? Because they would literally skin their enemies alive? They would sacrifice and sometimes rape children? They would capture women from other tribes and do horrible things to them? There was not one big happy group of Indians, all living peacefully until the white man came. If that had been the case, then clearly 
clearly the white man would have been overrun, even with them having gunpowder. They would have been overrun by the sheer numbers, and then the Indians would have had uh, gunpowder even sooner than they did. No. Columbus called the same savages Indian, the same Indian savages, that those very Indians also called savages. That's why they were at war with them. Now, I'm not saying atrocities did not come later from the white man. They certainly did. But, and there's a major but here, Christopher Columbus called people savages who were rightly called, rightly to be called savages. Al Jazeera's Yamero Al Jury, who should have gotten the Dunce Capital Month Award, maybe, put out a video entitled, Why Bugs Are the Protein of the Future. And, of course, it's more of a selling. These early racist characterizations played a part in forming later conceptions of insects as disgusting. But edible bugs are seen as sustainable protein. Yeah, because farting cows are warming the planet. And again, since we've proven on this show many, many times that there is no scientific proof nor evidence for man-made climate change, then you can see very clearly how such a person ended up on the Dunce Capital Month Award show. Only three laugh. Dump, da da dum da da dum da da dum Don't forget you can donate at the correct news at hotmail.com through PayPal. It helps me. Time to do this is time I could be doing something else needing to mail out the caps, the research time, articles, everything, all of that you guys pay for. So please help me at the correct views at hotmail.com. Breitbart, the next frontier university and college union says anyone can self-identify as black. Now this ties into the next story. So you do not want to zone out. The University of College, the University of College Union, ACU, UCU, has declared that anyone can self-identify as black, disabled, LGBT, or women. So you can, you can now claim to be gay, even if you're not gay, and that is somehow helping gay rights. UCU, excuse me, has a long history from predecessor unions of enabling members to self-identify, whether that is being black, disabled. You can identify as disabled if you're not. That should make parking a treat. I can't wait to see what parking is like at that college. Walking out perfectly, I identify as disabled. LGBT or woman, and we want women. A six-page position statement from the union said it represents over 120,000 academics, lecturers, trainers, instructors, researchers, managers, administrators, computer staff, librarians, and post-grades in college, prisons, adult education, and training organizations, pretty much everywhere. It supports the right of all women, including trans women, to safe spaces. Can't be judged by the fact that you look ridiculous in a dress. UCU also supports a social rather than medical model of gender recognition. So, in other words, throw science out the window. Isn't that a lot like I was saying similarities between Nazi Germany earlier? However, if everyone can identify as black, then certainly a black person can identify as black, right? I mean, that just makes common sense. No, they arrest him. Campus reform. Black conservative removed from meeting over Justin Trudeau blackface costume. Now, we all know that Justin Trudeau dressed in blackface. A black Colorado State University student government member was asked to leave a meeting the day before Halloween because he showed up dressed as Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in blackface. So when a black man makes fun of a white man being a black man, the black man has to leave the group. Let me repeat that. I know it was hard to, I get it. A black man making fun of a white man who was dressed as a black man has to leave the group for being offensive. So anybody can identify as black, but if you are black, then you might not be allowed to identify in black the way that you want to as black. That makes no sense. 
The costume depicted the Canadian Prime Minister, who was recently re-elected after old photos surfaced earlier this year showing him dressed in blackface. The incident came just one year after photos showing Virginia Democrat Ralph Norman in all a similar blackface. Kobe Peters, it says, a student government member from the CSU College, that's what I was thinking of earlier, of engineering, spoke exclusively with campus reform. Managing editor John Street about the incident, Peters said that the other student government leaders voted to have him removed from the meeting without offering him a chance to respond. The leaders who told him to leave, he said, were a variety of races, including black, white, and Hispanic. While blackface is considered racist when worn by others, Peters noted the irony of him being attacked for wearing blackface as a black man. As you can see, I cannot take off my black face, so adding on another shade, in my opinion, doesn't change anything, Peter said. He said he didn't wear the costume to offend anyone, but rather to start a discussion. I hope that I was hoping there would be a lot of discussion because I chose this costume to bring out the hypocr hypocrisy that can Canada re-elected Justin Trudeau on the back of the endorsement of Barack and Barack Obama. So we really need to figure out whether blackface is okay or it's not okay. The fact that I was voted out immediately just shows how hypocritical a certain side of the ideology is, Peter said. He goes on, <laughs> I think it's obvious that the reason being that it's being taken so offensively, I mean, is because I'm a black conservative on campus, which aren't supposed to exist. There you go, friends. Definitely read the rest of this. Black conservative removed from meeting over Justin Trudeau blackface costume campus reform. It's also on prison planning. Mind-blowing, friends. Mind-blowing. Um, the student government leaders were not the only ones who spoke out against him. So did the National Society of Black Engineers. So he was attacked for, you know, just his humor, kind of like David Chappelle. And yet when you stick up for them, well, they don't count, right? It's because you're pointing out to hypocrisy and the fact that we're all getting hosed equally. And that brings us to what you are waiting for. Listen, here it is. Hear it. The Dunn's Cap of the Month Award winner. I want to remind you as we do this, friends, you can donate to the show at the uh, correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. I've got the award. I'm going to call it up for everyone to sell. I'll probably move this camera. And of course, I will go ahead and put it on the Facebook page. PJ Dub Prison Planet. The winner is New Hampshire Town removes Christmas. From its, let me get rid of this player, removes Christmas from its ceremony after two people complain about being offended. I'm so offended by Christmas because I'm such a little snowflake and I need my safe space. I need it. Oh my God, I'm so sick of these people. All right. So what if two people complained about the fact that removing Christmas from display was offensive? Remember when they used to make cartoons about banning Christmas, and it was always on during the Christmas season. One of them, I think, there was a bear. I don't know. I mean, you guys remember the cartoons. I think I even watched one of them last year. Banning Christmas was this joke. And then you become an adult and you realize, oh my God, there are people that really do want to ban Christmas. It sounded so ridiculous that you couldn't even believe it as a plot line as a six-year-old, and now people are trying to do it for real. <clears throat> The town of Durham, New Hampshire, announced it was removing several Christmassy elements from its annual holiday celebration because, two, people complained about being offended. Well, when we open our borders the way we are, we can probably get more than two to complain if we bring in enough whiners. Yes, really. According to CBS Boston, the annual tree lighting ceremony will undergo changes in an effort to remove religious overtones why didn't they just stay in the country that they wanted to be in? I don't care if somebody wants to come to America and embrace our traditions. 
but to come and change them, why don't you just stay where they weren't already changed if you liked it so much? You just supposedly left for a better life. That better life involves Christmas, and there's nothing in the Constitution that forbids that, and I'll get to that in a minute. The event will be renamed Frostfest. Well, isn't that offensive to people from Florida who don't get any snow for Christmas? Seems awful uninclusive to people that might have a holiday celebration that doesn't have any snow. Maybe you shouldn't call it that. That's offensive. So offensive. The event will be renamed Frostfest, while the formal tree lighting ceremony itself will be abolished and Santa will not arrive on the fire truck as he has in the past. Yeah, because most people don't know any history. For instance, let me know if anyone's listening to this. Let me know if anyone is hearing this part of the show. How many of you know St. Nicholas was responsible for making sure that Arabic women were not sold into slavery because their family was too poor by giving them gold? St. Nicholas. Christmas wreath will be replaced on posts on Main Street. Usually they will also be absent now. Chancellor, Town Chancellor Sally Tobias, who has won the award, the changes were made after one person said that he had always had a problem with the Christmas tree. There are a couple of people that did express some concerns about how they felt be, about being included. Well, then don't be part of it, you don't. I don't celebrate Islam. Therefore, I mean, I'm not Islamic. Therefore, I don't celebrate Ramadan. I don't try to tell you that you can't display images of it. That's ridiculous. Mindless. In other words, because two weak-minded idiots, I love Paul Joseph Watson, complained about being offended that the town voted to take Christmas out of its Christmas celebrations, undoubtedly angering the vast majority of residents. Control, just like the global warming. You see it. I'm sure you see it. <coughs> to stop cultures and faith from practicing publicly would be very un-American. I think that's the beauty of our country, said Rabbi Baral Slavtaki. Now, we all know that Jews, such as Miss, uh, this, rap, this fine rabbi here, we all know that Jews celebrate Christmas. No, he's standing up for something bigger. Um, he was refused when asked the town to display the menorah during the eight days of Hanukkah last year. So, because two people complained, Jews and Christians get mistreated. Severely. So here is what I am sending them for you people on high def. I am going to move the camera here so that hopefully you can see it. Hit pause or something. All right. Now, for everyone else, and I'm going I'm to put it on Facebook's comment line. I'll try to get it onto YouTube's. But again, if you go to Facebook.com slash the correct views. It'll be on the comment line for the Facebook stream. The Dunn's Cap of the Month Award. The Constitution forbids government from endorsing a religion. It in no way prohibits the displaying of a religion. I even capitalized both words for that. Endorsing and displaying. Or related symbols which are freely chosen and freely embraced by the citizenry. The founding document forbids mandating that anyone must attend any event, religious or otherwise, but it in no way suggests that Christian, Jewish, or other symbols may not be openly displayed, and it never implies that those who wish to attend should be denied the right to see someone's open display of beliefs, even if they differ. For not understanding the difference between freedom of religion and freedom from religion, which is promised to no one, Town Chancellor Sally Tobias wins the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. And I know you guys are waiting to see the hat. I do have the hat for one and all to see. There is the Dunce. These things are expensive to send, just so you know. Really help me out by chucking me a few pennies to send these. Very angry Santa Claus. Yeah, I think everyone can see. And he is saying, I bet that if the tree kissed Allah's ass or promoted gay butt sex, it would have been okay. 
Yeah, I really wrote that. Because it's true. It's true. We've seen it time and time again. There's always a no something. Of course, this time it is free speech. I may have used it before. I'm not sure. Christmas trees are so offensive. And I not only drew a rather nice Christmas tree here, but the person I drew is wearing a headband with an inverted cross on it. Because, you know, Christmas trees are offensive. Now, I am sending this to the town chancellor. It will be in the mail. And I'm, that is the last story that is one of the 12 that you can vote on for the dunce cap of the year. So let me know which one you thought was the dumbest. And uh, I'll put your name in the drawing. Make sure I, I hear about it. Uh, make it stand out. If you email me at the correct views of hotmail.com, put um, dunce cap entry in the uh, subject line. Thank you, friends. Good night. God bless.